Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and I am a feminine brand perception advisor and I enjoy talking about the best topic on fashion, beauty, charm, fashion history, feminine strategy, feminine aura, etc. Now, the title of this video is You Were Fooled, Skinny Was Always In. And the reason why I want to talk about this topic is because I know that in the coming months, in the coming years, the beauty standard is going to have a huge switch and people are going to feel, especially women, especially thicker women, they're going to feel left down because a lot of celebrities who've been pretending to embrace the big girl aesthetic were actually just falling back on that aesthetic because a certain look was not achievable until now. And now because of science or thanks to science, people are able to attain this look. And I also want to talk about the fact that, you know, we've been sold this idea that there's been some type of cycle in which skinny was in and now it's out. And I'm here to tell you skinny was always in. It was just a different way of promoting it. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Now, in terms of the celebrities who've been very open about using it, obviously just Elon Musk. And I guess for men, it's much more easy to, you know, go out in public and say you've been using uh, medication for your weight loss. Loss, but for women, it's a little bit trickier. So not a lot of women have been actually very open about the use of Ozempic or other medication for weight loss. But we definitely know that there's been, you know, Khloe Kardashian, for example, has had the hardest time losing weight and keeping the weight off in her adulthood. And now she is the skinniest people have ever seen her. And Kim Kardashian is also becoming more and more skinny um, month after month. Now there's also Julia Fox and Chelsea Handler and many other celebrities, but I'm not going to mention everyone in this video. Now, uh, obviously, I'm going to talk about this medication. So they contain chemical and obviously you can, you know, it's Ozempic, but it's also Rebelsis. There's also a lot of different different names for different medication but basically these medication contain chemicals that can you know promote to, so to certain people a, a sensation of being satiated for a long period of time and that allows them to consume less food and therefore it, it helps people you know losing weight and keeping the weight off uh, as we know when it comes to you know weight loss uh as we age, our metabolism becomes slower and slower. So certain people have been used to eating a certain way, but then when their metabolism is slower, they're not as able to remain skinny. And that's that happens to a lot of models like Barbara Palvin or like Tyra Banks and you know other celebrities and other models like Naomi Campbell and Claudia Schiffer. Obviously, these women seem it seems for these women like you know they probably were always eating less, lesser than other people. And so for this reason, you know, they're able to remain skinny throughout the entire career and that's probably the reason why we often see Naomi still doing the runway for the catwalks for a lot of different brands now that's one of the biggest inequality when it comes to you know weight loss some people just feel satiated much earlier than others but now with this medication there is a huge switch and then people now are able to keeping you know a certain weight because they are able to eat less in terms of the beauty standards now, uh, it was always, you know, in terms of the skinny girl promoted in Hollywood, promoted through fashion, promoted through certain brands, especially luxury brands, that women had to have certain angular features. Uh, the, the angular feature part is extremely, you know, a part of the dramatic aesthetic, which is characterized by more angles, not only in the face, but also in the body and in the body flesh. So usually these women tend to be size zero, size two, and, you know, they've been popular in the 80s and the 90s with, you know, people like Kate Moss, also in the 2000s, like, you know, Paris Hilton and Giselle. So that was the overall look that a lot of people was, you know, were looking into. And for certain models like Ivanka Trump, for example, who did have the, the height, the right height and the right, you know, size, because they did not have those angular features in the face as well, a lot of people were just saying, you know, Ivanka just doesn't have it. And by it, they probably meant, you know, the very angular facial features that were highly favored throughout you know most of the industry whether it's modeling whether it's you know movies etc being the it girl required to have those types of features and then obviously you have another archetype with 
with more curves like Kim Kardashian, who was probably around a size four to six. And, you know, those were probably what we were used to most of the time. Nothing was really changing. But then with the music industry came a new era. So with the music industry, what we start to notice is that because, you know, uh, singers are now more public in terms of their image with music videos. The rise of music videos, especially for female singers, was huge. And a lot of scientific studies actually prove that people who have who have more body flesh and who tend to be, you know, more of an average size tend to have a better voice quality, vocal aerodynamic, and better phonary range than people who are on the skinnier size. Uh, People don't really know, and the science, the, the scientists don't really know why, but that's just something that people have noticed throughout the years. But there's also the fact that now, you know, singers are required and, you know, are almost expected to dance and perform hip hop and pop dances. And most of the time, those dances are most more aesthetically pleasing when they are performed by people who tend to be a little bit flasher than what we're used to with the size zero to two uh, in terms of the perception and also people who are shorter in terms of height. So not necessarily the model type. And so you have, you know, uh, dancers, uh, you know, you have singers like Britney Spears, like Beyonce and like Jayla who start becoming more and more famous, not only just because of the way they could sing, but also because of the way they could dance. And also I added another element with the vixen who also are part of this huge switch where you know women with more curves are expected to be on television so overall just having young adults and teenagers being more exposed to those types of aesthetic now it becomes more and more acceptable to be a little bit curvier but keep in mind that even with this aesthetic whether it's Christina Aguilera, Beyonce, or Jennifer Lopez, these women were still required to stay under a certain weight. So the pressure was still there definitely for them to remain on the skinnier side. It was just more acceptable now to be maybe a size four or a size six. Now I'm going to talk about the Kardashian. Now the Kardashian took this to a whole other level because now it's not just about being a little bit curvy, it's about having another sort of, of non-attainable look that people can look up to and wish that they could look like. And that is when the whole big girl aesthetic comes into place. Now Kim and Chloe were two women who uh, definitely were never able to get to that size zero and size two that was probably preferred in Hollywood. Uh, Kim Kardashian was somebody who hung out a lot with Paris Hilton, so I'm sure she was aware of how far from the preferred look she was. And so a very strategic way for her to get into another sort of non-attainable look was for her to get uh, breast implants, to get surgery, to get a smaller waist, and then to keeping her, you know, to, to get another type of surgery to enhance her hips like a BBL. But keep in mind that the reason why they did that was because the size zero, size two aesthetic was not achievable for them back then. Now, what you can notice with this family is that you have one sister who for some reason has never gone through that and that's Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner is always was always part and has always been part of the preferred look of being skinny, slender and tall. And for that reason, that's why you never see her actually going through that, you know, surgery uh, journey in terms of her body. That's because she's already part of an accepted look that's actually Actually preferred by a lot of luxury brands and by a lot of people who are in the elite. So there's no need for her to get into the whole BBL thing because she already has her category and that category has worked in Hollywood for so long that she's basically good in terms of what she looks like. But now let's add in other people like Cardi B. Cardi B, you know, who became very big in the, the years like 2016, 2017, you know, she's been very open about the fact that most of the, the, the reason why she, you know, went and have this plastic surgery was because she was part of, she was part of the adult industry where it was easier for her to get better tips when she had that type of body versus if she didn't. So definitely a need for her to get into an industry that basically preferred a certain type of body over another. And then you also have Nicki Minaj. And what a lot of people do not know about Nicki is that she initially wanted to be an actress. And I guess because she didn't fit into the mold of a lot of different, you know, casting directors and so on, she fell back into rap. And obviously, she's very talented at it. But that was not her initial goal. And obviously, with the rap, uh, the rap aesthetic, 
knowing that vixens were the ones being put on the video, she herself had to look like a vixen in order to be accepted by this industry for her looks. Now, what we see is that, you know, with surgery becoming more and more famous and more and more used by celebrities, people like Kim Kardashian, like Kylie, are now able to get the dramatic, you know, high cheekbone, permanent jaw type of aesthetic, but only with their face. And it's really funny to see that even though they were highly they were highly promoting the dramatic aesthetic with their face because they were not able to do the same with their body. The body stayed in the romantic category. But now that they're able to be dramatic all over with the face and the body, they're definitely ditching the whole thick girl aesthetic because that was always their preferred look. That was always the initial goal for most of these people. It's just that the science wasn't there yet. And another layer that I want to add and to just you know reemphasize the fact that the skinny girl aesthetic was always preferred, I'm going to talk about Bella Hadid. So Bella Hadid is someone that was seen as the ugly dunk king of the family because she didn't have the right facial features, because maybe she was a brunette or maybe because she was not skinny enough. But now that she has reached hell, like she, she just went from being, you know, very average to extremely uh, skinny and she's reached level of being skinny that no people, nobody thought she could reach. Now that she's able to get to that level, people are embracing her. And she's basically, in my opinion, even more appreciated than her sister, Gigi. And then you have Emily Ratajkowski. And Emily, technically, the fact that she's a little bit curvy also played into the fact that she became famous. But initially, what people really loved about her is the fact that she was both extremely skinny while having something about her being a little bit curvaceous. But in the case of these two women, what you see is the dramatic look, which is their permanent jaw, high cheekbones, skinny bodies, and long vertical lines. Now, you also have Madison Beer. Madison Beer also has that type, that type of aesthetic with her face, not necessarily with her height, but because she's an influencer her, it didn't really matter as long as she was skinny people were willing to promote her and to put her in the front page of you know anything related to influencer beauty aesthetic and today now we have Lily Rose Depp who's also heavily promoted now with the new show The Idol and as we see again the skinny girl aesthetic is again being preferred and heavily promoted now in terms of the strategy that Hollywood has used in order to keep the skinny girls while also promoting the thick girl, they've been able to do this through the use of luxury brands, through the use of cinema, and through the use of just overall the desire and the yearning for most people to still be skinny. Because skinny girls or people who tend to be smaller in terms of their body tend to appear younger and because there is this reach for this attainable goal of remaining young for as long as possible people are always going to try to get girls to become skinnier and skinnier as their age and for women to get as skinnier and skinnier as they age now in terms of women who've been able to not you know be the victims of these sorts of trends i think jlo is probably one of the best example. Uh, JLo is somebody that probably knew that she was never going to be into the, you know, she was never going to be a size zero. She was never going to be a size two just because of the way she's built. But instead of going hard into it and, you know, just struggling throughout her entire career, what she decided to do very early on is to adopt the fitness girl aesthetic, to go hard into it and to do it better than anybody else. And today people are so surprised of how, look, of how good she looks at her age. And you know, having done that, there is no one that surpasses her in that category, especially in Hollywood. Another woman who's also been able to create her own category and, you know, not be the victim of those types of beauty standards is Rihanna. Rihanna is to me more of a renaissance icon because she's the type of celebrity who people think looks good in anything and who people don't really bash when she loses or uh, when she gains weight. I've noticed that about her. She's able to go from one look to another very quickly without having people criticize her or anything. And because she's always been that type of person to switch her appearance very quickly, nobody has quite, quite the time to put her into one category. So keeping people on their toes was definitely one of the best strategies that she's used throughout her career. And because of that, she's one of those people that have never been, you know, told to maybe change their nose or change the way they dress or 
put on more makeup. So all those different things really helped her. And now she just fully embraced for who she is. Now, if there are other people that you can think of that have been embracing the thick girl aesthetic that you think is now completely ditching the look, let me know under the comment section. I'll be happy to read it for you guys. And just overall, just know that despite where the beauty industry may go or where the beauty standards may go, becoming very aware of what you are and you know perfecting the look that you've been given is always going to be more rewarding in the end because keep in mind that despite the use despite the use of a zampic by these celebrities because they're not necessarily made to have those types of bodies they're still never going to be as praised as the women who are able to get it naturally so getting into the habit of embracing your own category and your own archetype is always going to be more beneficial in the end. Obviously, most of us are not celebrities, so we're not going to, go, going to be compared to people like Kate Moss or Naomi Combo, but just overall, I guess it creates better and healthier individuals mentally. So see you in the next one.